Hi everybody, this is Anne. Welcome back for part two of our top 10 countdown of the best-selling small item pottery gifts. To come up with our list, we elicited the help from the very talented members of the Pottery Studio Facebook group to share their best sellers. In part one, we counted down 10 through five. And this week, we'll reveal the top five, plus I'll show you a cute berry bowl project with a surprise dual function, so stay tuned. On to the countdown. Number five is the ever popular planter. Here are several imaginative animal-inspired pots by the ingenious Naomi Nickerson. The plants add color, personality, and symbolism to each design. These lovely globe-shaped planters are made by the inspirational Michelle Krill. The greenery chops off the shape and the glaze combinations of her piece is almost like a little crown. So that they're fully functional, she punches drainage holes in the bottom of the globe and fits it into a matching saucer. Number four is the irresistible animal sculptures. These sweet piggies were created by the very original Inga Kobe. The whimsical Sandy Knowles hand builds these adorable bunnies. And we couldn't resist including these charming puffins made by the wonderful Herr de Vandenbroek. At festivals, these little eye catchers are not only impulse items, but will also attract attention of customers who will want to look at your other wares. Number three are the much sought after mini pots. The amazing Don Goodrich is famous for his pots with the dog themes. Customers always love a personal touch that they can identify with. The marvelous Sally Mae created these functional little lidded minis. Her beautiful glaze color combinations would be a great addition as little jam jars or butter dishes on any dinner table. Number two is the always in demand ornament. You can give them away as wedding favors or use them as decorations during the holidays like these beauties by the fantastic Kat Jarose. Who wouldn't get a smile when receiving one of these amusing little piggies? I made these ornaments for home decoration for any time of the year. If you want free instructions on how to make them, follow the link in the description section. Finally, number one is the beloved berry bowl. These beautiful mini colanders are very popular all year round. Thanks to the fabulous Deborah Hughes Gare for letting us display her gorgeous bowls. I thought I'd demonstrate how to make one with a saucer, and as an added bonus, I'll make it so that it functions as an herb stripper too, an idea given to me by Leanne Lapasso Hallwick. Berry bowl colanders are smaller than standard size colanders, so I started out with about one pound three ounces of clay and centered it on the bat. I then found the center of the clay and hollowed it out with the palm of my hand. Since I was making a footed bowl, I needed to leave enough clay at the bottom for trimming, about a half an inch. I measured it with my needle tool. I need to hollow out the center just a little bit more. Each time I push clay to the sides of the bowl, I always compress the clay along the rim of the wall to strengthen it. Now I'm going to check it one more time with my needle tool. There, it's just where I need it to be, about a half inch deep. Now I was ready to pull up the walls. I used a damp sponge to push the clay at the bottom upward from the bat. Throwing a bowl is a different technique than throwing a cylinder. When throwing a cylinder, you angle the walls inward as it gets taller. When you're throwing a bowl shape, you angle the walls up and out. You can see where I used pressure from my left hand up against the clay.
Each time I pulled the clay upward, I compressed the clay at the top of the rim. Once I got the height that I wanted, I used the red rib to smooth and begin shaping and bellying out the bowl. I started at the inner center point and pushed the clay outward from the bottom all the way to the top. Some berry bowls have handles, but my design will not. Instead, I just hyperextended the rim at the top for a better grip of the bowl when in use. I stopped the wheel and took a look at the outer profile. I could see that it's still not rounded out enough to make a nice transition to the wide rim. I used the red rim one more time to push the clay along the bottom outward. I kept pushing it outward until I got this particular profile. The foot is wider than the belly, and the belly is in proportion to the wide rim. I cut the rim so that it was even, and then I compressed and rounded it. I then cleaned up the foot a little so that it maintained an outward angle from the bowl. There are many ways to shape a foot. I prefer this one. As I'll be making a saucer for this bowl, I used calipers to measure the width along the widest part of the foot, like so. The floor of the saucer will need to accommodate the distance of the bowl foot from here to here. I wired the bowl and set it aside to let it stiffen to leather hard. Next, I threw the saucer. I started out with a little less than a pound of clay and centered it on the bat. I began to push the clay slowly down and outward using enough water to keep the clay from breaking apart, but not too much so that it'll melt down. I was also careful when flattening the clay not to push the outer edge over itself so the air gets trapped along the bottom. Once I have that wide, flat shape, I put my calipers along the top to make sure it's wide enough for the bowl. Not quite yet. I needed to widen it out just a little more. That's better. Now it's wide enough. As the saucer will be trimmed, I check to see how much clay I had at the bottom. I needed to leave more than a quarter inch depth. Plus, I was hoping I had even more clay to push a wall outward. Luckily, I did. I used my damp sponge to push downward at the center only a little bit and pushed the clay outward to form a shallow wall. The goal is to have a flat but wide bowl with enough clay at the bottom to trim. This is what I was looking for. Next, I shaped the shallow bowl to angle the rim outward a bit to echo the shape of the colander. I compressed and rounded the rim so that it was not too thin but nice and hearty. Finally, I wanted to make sure the bowl will sit flat in the saucer so I used the outward facing prongs of the calipers to measure along the floor of the bowl. It fits, but it also looks a little tight. So I need to push the floor outward just a little bit more. I used my red rib for this. I pushed the clay outward along the floor and continued this all the way to the top. Now there's plenty of room for the bowl to sit in there nicely. I finished the foot, wired it off, and set it aside to dry to leather hard. Now on to the trimming. I already have a berry bowl and saucer dried to the leather hard stage and ready for trimming. I'll trim the saucer first. I tap centered it on the wheel head and then place lugs around the bottom. 
As I had a little bit of an uneven edge from where I wired it, I used my needle tool like this to lop off the uneven bit. This makes it easier to trim. I trimmed out the very top to begin forming the profile that I needed. My goal is to leave a wide base to support the wide bowl and to have a short foot. Once I defined the foot from the bowl, I trimmed the bowl back so that it was lower than the foot. Note that I switched trim tools as the bowl was so short that my other trim tool couldn't get in there. Now I move to the inner part of the foot. I defined where the inner rim of the foot would be and trimmed downward just a little. Now I move to the center part of the foot and trim that away first and slowly trim outward to the rim. The center of the bowl is the most fragile part, so I want as much clay around it as I trim for support. Once it was trimmed out, I rounded the rim with my fingers. Next I'll trim the bowl just as I did the saucer. I centered it on the wheel head and anchored it with lugs. I trimmed away the uneven clay from where I wired it with a needle tool. I trimmed the foot profile from the bowl, then trimmed the rest of the bowl profile to match the new foot. This foot is a bit different than the saucer. I want this foot to be angled outward from the bowl so that the water can easily flow away from under the bowl. So I use this trim tool to undercut the bowl from the foot like so. I then move to the inner part of the foot and define the edge of the rim like so. Again I move to the center part of the bowl and begin trimming it downward and out toward the rim. I trimmed a little at a time to avoid trimming too much. Now I switch to the wider trim tool to clean up the trim rings and even out the rounded bottom. I wanted just a little rounder bottom to match up with the outer profile of the bowl, so I trimmed that away, then I smoothed it out and rounded the rim. Next I needed to punch out the holes. I marked the center of the bowl and placed a trim spinner so that I could see the mark through the center of the tool. I marked the rim into fourths like so. According to the tool, the one-fourth marks are a gray color, so I marked where the gray lines hit. I have a rounded trim tool that I centered over each mark and cut the rim at these marks. With a wet finger, I smoothed and rounded these cut marks so now I have a lot of room for water runoff. The next step is to punch the holes. Here's one of my favorite tools that I use to cut the holes, but there are some really cool hole cutters available that'll do the job. First I use my finger to mark out a line where I'll make the cuts. Symmetry is very important when cutting out the holes, so I line up the cutter with the center of the cutouts that I made along the rim. I try to cut at the same angle each time and then push the tool through. Remember, only punch the hole if the clay is leather hard. 
you'll get a much sharper look. You can get creative with your hole placements, but I'm going to keep it relatively simple. I'm going to move to the outside of the bowl. Again, I mark a line with my fingers, line up the holes exactly where my pattern will be, and then punch the holes trying to keep the same angle each time. Notice that there are burrs all around the hole. Don't clean it up yet. Wait until the clay is bone dry for this. You'll be much happier, I promise. Leave it like this for now. Before I let the pieces dry, I just want to make sure that they fit together correctly. I have a bowl that I trimmed a couple of days ago, and it's now bone dry. Notice I've added holes along the rim. These are actually herb stripper holes, and I'll demonstrate how to use those later. Now the clay is ready to knock off the burrs. I take my metal razor rib and gently run it flat to the body of the bowl so that it slices off the unsightly burrs, like so. Once you have the ragged edges smoothed down, the holes will still be sharp. I wet a paintbrush and soften the edges of the holes, just like so. I also like to get into any crevices that might be harder to clean up later. As I'm using a grog-free porcelain, I use a damp sponge to clean up and soften any sharp edges. While the clay is in the greenware stage, I like to decorate my pottery. I decided to add a few bees to fly around the fruit. Here you can see how the herb stripper holes work on the rosemary stems. And there's your top 10 small item pottery gifts. Thank you to the Pottery Studio Facebook group who generously worked with us. If you liked our videos, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.